Hey guys, welcome to Tony's How To's. In this video, we'll be showing you how to use Google Drive, the ultimate guide. So we have a lot of topics here to discuss. So let's start with how to use Google Drive for desktop. So it might be new in using Google Drive for desktop and you're wondering how do you actually start using it? Well, it's actually pretty easy. First thing that we need to do is we need to install the official Google Drive desktop application. So let's go and go to google.com, type in the following, which is going to be Google Drive. Now in this case, you should be able to see the first link here, which is personal cloud storage and file sharing platform, which is Google, so Google Drive. So let's go ahead and open it up. In this case, what we need to do next is we need to go to the download section. So the top section, go ahead and click on download. And from here, cho choose the option that says download drive for desktop. Now in this case, once you've done that, that would initiate the download process for your Google Drop setup. So in this case, just wait for it to finish downloading. And from then on, we need to open this up once the download is complete. So let's just go ahead and wait for it. So once the download is complete, you could go ahead and just click on the setup or .exe file here. Click on yes whenever it actually requests further uh, access or uh, basically allow it to make changes on your desktop. And from here, you should be able to see the install Google Drive option. Now from here, you have the option to add an application shortcut to your desktop if you want to and add desktop shortcuts to Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides if you want to. So in this case, I want to add an application shortcut on my desktop here just to make sure that we add that. And from here, let's go ahead and click on Install. Now once you click on Install, it's going to start the installation process. So let's go ahead and click on Launch once it's successfully installed. Now in this case, what we need to do next is we need to basically set it up. So in this case, just let's go ahead and just wait for it to pop up. Now, once it's actually boots up, you should be able to see the welcome to Google Drive pop up here. So in this case, let's go ahead and click on get started. And what we need to do next is we need to sign in into our account. So let's go ahead and click on sign in. And this will actually open up our browser, which in this case, we just need to choose our account that we need to sign in. So in this case, I want to choose this uh, account here that I have. Let's go ahead and choose this one. Go ahead and click on it. And what we need to do next is we need to click on sign in to confirm this one. And you should see the success if you sign in into Google Drive. In this case, let's go ahead and minimize this one and go back into Google Drive. In this case, once you've done that, you should be able to see the pop-up again. And as you can see, you have the following options. So you have to choose uh, folders to sync from your Google, uh, your computer to Drive. In this case, you could go ahead and uh, choose whatever here, or you could even create a new folder. So let's go and click on Add Folder here. In this case, maybe I want to add a folder in my downloads location. In this case, I want to create a new folder. Let's go ahead and right-click on this one, create new. And maybe I want to name this one as Google Drive. Now, once you've done that, you could go ahead and click this one and click on select folder. And let's go ahead and make sure that it's actually selected. Once you've done that, let's go ahead and click on next. Now, from here, you have the difference between sync to Google Drive and backup to Google Drive. So let's go ahead and click on got it. And from here, we need to choose the backup photos and videos to Google Photos. So if you want to keep like specific files into Google Drive, you could choose the specific folders or uh, folders here to, so that you will have a backup of those files. But I don't want to do that. Let's go ahead and click on the option uh, next here. So let's go ahead and click on C Drives, Files, and File Explorer. In this case, it's going to start syncing the files that we have right now in uh, from Google Drive into our uh, section here. So in this case, let's just wait for it to start uh, syncing that and just click on next here. And from here, what we need to do is we uh, have to read a few things here. So make important files available offline use. So in this case, let's go and click on open drive here. As you can see, you should now have this specific pop up here whenever you're accessing Google Drive. In this case, when we actually go to our folder here, so let's go ahead and go to downloads. So that, since that's where we actually downloaded them, let's go ahead and click on Google Drive here. And this is where you'll be able to see all the folders uh, that you'll be able to, uh, or, or, or all the files and folders that you have on your Google account. So in this case, I uh, want to go ahead and start creating like a uh, folder here. So maybe I want to say this is going to be a test folder. So let's go ahead and uh, take, uh, create a new folder, test folder. And from here, we want to create a new file here. Let's go ahead and click on it. And from here, maybe I want to add a new video. So for example, I want to use this video. Let's go right click on this one and basically paste it in here. Once you've done that, we need to go ahead and visit our Google Drive at the bottom right here. So right click on this one. And as you can see, uh, we should be able to double click on it or right click on it. And from here, we want to go ahead and just wait for the uploading to sync. And once it's actually done, we are now ready to view it. 
Now in this case, once you actually go back into our account here, so in this case, let's go ahead and go back into Google Drive, click on go to drive here. And from here, what we need to do, you should be able to see your My Drive section. So the left panel here, go ahead and click on My Drive. And from here, you should be able to see different um, of files that I already have here. So now, as you can see, we now have that file that we just recently transferred and it's in the test folder. So whenever you click on the location here, you should be able to see uh, Google Drive test folder. So this is the folder that we just created. You have to upload high quality video on Google Drive. In this case, the first thing you want to do here is you want to open up Google Drive. Let's go ahead and open up Google Drive here. Now in here, what we need to do is we need to look in into your account and you also want to create a new folder here. Let's go ahead and click on the new button at the bottom right here and you want to actually click on folder. So we are going to name this as videos and click on create. Now from here, let's go ahead and click on the videos folder and let's go ahead and click on the plus button again at the bottom right of your screen. Now from here, you want to choose the upload option that you see on your screen here. Let's go ahead and click on upload. And from here, you want to select the file or the high quality video that you want to add. So for example, I want to choose this one. Let's go ahead and click on it. And it's going to start uploading it. Now, depending on the size of the video itself, so the more high quality the video is, the longer the upload is going to be. But in this case, once it's actually uploaded, you should be able to see it in here. So whenever you click on it, you should now be able to see a video of that, or in this case, the file itself that we just uploaded. How to create a Google Drive link to share files. So first thing that we want to do here is we want to access Google Drive. So you could access Google Drive on any mobile browser that you have. So right now I'm using Google Chrome and I went to drive.google.com and just basically lock in. Now, how do we share our files in Google Drive? So how do we do that? Well, there's actually multiple ways on how you can do that. So first thing before we could share, you first have to upload your files here. So since I already uploaded a file here, which is a test file here, which is the file that we'll be using to share it to someone else. So in this case, what's the first way for you to share this file? So in here, as you can see, when you hover over that specific file, you see this icons here at the right side of your screen. Now in here, we have the share button as well as the download. Now, if you want to share, just click on the share button. It's going to pop up this UI here. Now in here, what are the important things that you should know? Now in here, we have the people with access section now in this case these are the people that has access on this specific file so if you go ahead and copy the link here only the people who has access will be able to see the actual file meaning the other people that doesn't have access to it although they have the link for it but if you don't have access on this specific file they won't be able to see it now in here, we also have the general access. So this is the access or type of access that we want to set for our file. So right now, since this is set to restricted, only people with access can open with the uh, open the file. Now in this case, you could change this with anyone with the link. So meaning, if you copy the link here, like, as you can see, I just changed this one. So if I copy the link here and just basically send this to anyone, anyone with the link will be able to access that specific file regardless of the people who are actually added here in the people with access. Now, if you want to add someone here with the people access, like for example, you want to use the restricted general access here. So if you want to use restricted, you just need to type in their email here and you'll be able to add them. Now in this case, let's just use anyone with a link. Just copy a link here and just click on done. As, as you can see, when I paste it here in the new tab, you'll be able to see the link and just basically paste it and enter it. And you, as you can see, you'll be able to see that specific file. Now, what's the other way? So a good thing about Google Drive here is you could actually right click on the files here. So whenever you right click on it, you'll also see the option that sa says share. And we also have the option that says copy link here. So if you already know what the specific access setting here, or you're sure that you want to use that specific share access, you just need to copy the link here. Same thing. You'll be doing the same thing that we just did before. And that's about it. How to lock Google Drive folder. So first thing that we want to do here is we want to access our Google Drive. So go ahead and go to google.com on any browser that you have and just click on the dotted icon here, which is the Google app section. So when I click on it, just look for drive here and just click on it. Now you'll be redirected to the Google Drive website. 
Now in here we want to create a new form. So go ahead and click on the new at the top left. And from here, choose Google form. And it's going to load up another tab here. Now from here, we want to name this as password. And from here, we want to change a few things. So click on the options here that says untitled question. So for here, you could input like password if you want to. And from here, you could change this to short answer. And from here, we want to go ahead and enable the required option. Now here we have the more options. Make sure that you click on that and make sure that you choose the response validation. Now in this case, we want to change this to text and we want to change or input the following, which is going to be the password for our form here. And in here, we want to go ahead and go to settings. Now in this case, we need to go ahead and go to presentation. And from here, we want to go ahead and edit a few things. No, in here, we have to change the option for confirmation message. So in this case, just click on edit. And from here, you could say, uh, thank you. Thank you. And you want to paste the link for your folder. So in this case, we have the untitled folder here. You need to right click on it and you want to share this or copy link immediately if you, if you want that as well and paste the link here. Now, once you've done that, just click on save and you want to go ahead and preview this. So, and whenever someone actually answers this one, it's going to be locked. So in here for them to actually access the link or the folder itself, you need to enter the password. As you can see, just click on submit. And then here we'll be able to access that folder. And that's about it. How to back up Google Photos to external hard drive. So I'll be showing you two methods on how to back up your photos from Google Photos into your external hard drive. So first method is kind of the manual way. So how do we do this? So first thing you need to do here is you need to go to photos.google.com and just basically log in into your account. Now, once in here, what we need to do is we need to select our photos. So immediately here at the top left of that photo, you'll be able to basically select that photo that you want to basically download. Now, in this case, you could also bulk select your photos here by clicking the check next to the date itself. As you can see, when we click on the check here next to the date, as you can see, all those photos that we have for that specific date will be transferred into the specific location. Now, in this case, I'm uh, sorry, in this specific manner, in this case, what we need to do next is we just need to click on the three dotted icon at the top right of your screen, click on download. And from here, our zip file should be generated and we'll be able to download those photos. Now, once the download is complete, what you need to do here is just locate the zip file, as you can see right now, open it up. And from here, you can just basically copy this one directly into your USB or external hard drive. Now, in this case, this is going to be the manual way. So how do we uh, basically do it for all photos that you have right now on your account? Well, to do that, first, you need to go to google.com. And from here, click on your profile icon at the top right. And from here, choose the manage your Google account option. Now, from here, what we need to do next is we need to go to data and privacy. And under data and privacy, you want to search for downloads. So to make it a lot easier for you, you could hit on control F on your keyboard and just type in download and you should be able to see this section here. So go ahead and click on download your data. And in this uh, UI here, which is Google Takeout, we want to click on the select all because we don't want to download all the information that we have right now. We only want our photos. Again, we need to look for photos here. So if you don't see immediately, you can go ahead and press and control F again, type in photos. And from here, just scroll down a bit or press on the next button here and you will see, you'll be able to see Google Photos. Now in this case, go ahead and select this option. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and select formats or even select specific albums that you want to uh, create a backup for. And he, in this case, just click on next step. And from here, it's going to give you options where you want to uh, have the uh, files transferred to. Now in this case, we have our destination. So you have the option to send download link via email or you have the option to add to box, OneDrive, Dropbox, Drive, if you want those. But for now, let's just choose send down link via email. And from here, we have the option to uh, get the frequency. Like for example, export once or export every two months for one year. Now you could also change the file type itself. So currently they have zip and TGZ if you want to. And the file size that will be used to basically uh, 
divide your uh, photos into. Now in this case, just click on a create export and from here it's going to create that export and you just need to basically wait for this one and you'll be receiving a link on your email for you to download those files. But yeah, so this one is pretty simple and this one is automatic if you set it to be, to be but that's about it. How to connect Google Drive to Slack. So the first thing that we need to do here is we need to go to slack.com, log in into our account, and from here on, we are now ready to start connecting our Google account into Slack. Now from here, we need to choose the more option that you see on the left panel here. And from here, choose the option that says apps. Now under apps, what we need to do is we need to look for Google Drive. So in this case, Google Drive is the first thing that you'll see here. But if you don't see it, you can go and just type in Google Drive here. And same thing, you should be able to see Google Drive. In this case, go ahead and click on the add button underneath the Google Drive option. And this should actually redirect you into the app directory for Slack. Now in this case, let's go ahead and click on add to Slack here. And from here, it's going to initiate the process of installing and connecting our account. Now it's going to ask some permissions to access this, so let's go ahead and click on allow. And once you've done that, it should be able to let us log in. Now in this case, let's go ahead and choose our account here. And from here, just go ahead and click on continue. And from here, just click on allow again. Now, I would suggest you to read further the uh, requirements and all the things that they will be accessing here. But in this case, once you've allowed everything that you see on the screen, it's going to say Google Drive is ready to be used in Slack. Now, in this case, let's go ahead and go back into Slack. And from here, when in, whenever we actually scroll down a bit here, you should be able to see Google Drive here. And under Google Drive, you should be able to see uh, different things that you could do on Google Drive itself. Now, in this case, this is how you connect Google Drive to Slack. And that's about it. How to sync Obsidian with Google Drive. So you might be wondering, how do you actually use Google Drive as a backup for Obsidian? Well, it's actually pretty easy, but there's going to be a few things that you need to do here for you to use Google Drive for Obsidian. Now, first thing you need to do here is you need to install the official Google Drive application for PC. So it's actually pretty easy. Go to their website here, which is going to be google.com slash drive slash download, or you could just basically just type in Google Drive download on Google and you should be able to see this link here. Now in this case, just click on download drive for desktop. This is going to be free. And from here, once you download it, go ahead and open it up and install it into your PC. Now in this case, just follow the on-screen steps on how to install a Google Drive there. And once installed, you just need to log in. Now, you'll know that you're successful in installing Google Drive here once you go to File Explorer here and usually you'll be able to see a Google Drive icon under the This PC section as well. Also, under Quick Access, Google Drive will also be added in there. Now, in this case, once you've done that, you could go ahead and click on Google Drive here, click on My Drive, and from here, what we need to do is we need to add a new folder. So in this case, just right click on this area here, click on the new section and go to folder. And from here, you just need to type in the following, which is going to be obsidian. And from here, you could go ahead and just leave it as is. Now, in this case, the next thing that we want to do is we need to switch over to obsidian next. So in this case, go ahead and open up obsidian here and we want to start using it. Now, in this case, there's going to be three options here that you could choose. You have create new vault open folder as vault or open vault from obsidian sync now in this case since we want to use google drive here click on the open section for open folder as vault so let's go ahead and click on open and from here you need to look for google drives so in this case go ahead and look for the google drive option so let's go ahead and click on it you need to go to my drive here and look for the obsidian folder that we just recently created and from here click on it and click on select folder now, once you've done that, you should be able to create this folder here for Obsidian. Now, in this case, whenever you actually create new or uh, add new something here, like for example, we want to add this one. So maybe I want to say there's going to be a testing note here and we want to say hi or hey in this section here. We also want to add a new section here for untitled. So maybe we want to view this one in Google Drive as well. Just to prove you that this being sync, we could go ahead and go back into Google Drive here and let's go to the Obsidian folder. And as you can see, testing note and untitled is now added in this section here as well. Now to give you an idea again, let's just add a new note here. And from here, maybe you want to say this is going to be hey. 
And from here, let's just go back into our folder and the hey.md file has been added in here. Now, in this case, if you want to reaccess this specific Obsidian node here in Google Drive, you just need to do the same thing on your uh, PC. Just locate that folder in your Google Drive section here, and you should be able to open it up. Now, just to give you an idea again, let's just go ahead and go to Google.com here. So let's just go to Google.com here. And from here, let's just click on the tree, the dotted icon here. And we want to go ahead and go to drive here just to see that if things actually synced up. Now, in this case, there's going to be a few things that we can view here. So let's just look for the folder section here. Go to Obsidian. And as you can see, the files are currently synced on my Google Drive. But yeah, so it's actually pretty easy. You just need to uh, have the correct tools here and a proper way to connect your Obsidian with Google Drive. And that's about it. How to transfer Google Photos to external hard drive. In this case, you might be wondering how do you actually transfer Google Photos to your external drive? Well, it's actually pretty easy. So first things first, we need to download our photos. So in this case, go ahead and open up any browser here. You want to type in the following, which is going to be photos.google.com. Now, in this case, if this is the first time that you're accessing your Google Photos here, make sure to log in first. But once you've logged in, you should be able to see the photo section. Now, first select the first photo that you want to add. Now, in this case, make sure to click on the check at the top left of that screen so that you'll be able to select it. Now, you could go ahead and hold on shift and that will actually select all the photos in between the first and last photo that you've selected. Now, once you've done that, you go ahead and click on the top right of, of your screen here, which is the three dotted option here. Let's go ahead and click on it and you want to click on download. Now, in this case, that would actually prepare your file to be downloaded and they will actually be downloaded as a zip file, as you can see right now. So whenever you click on the show folder option here, you should be able to see the zip file. So whenever you open it up, you should be able to see all the files that you have right now. In this case, you can go ahead and copy all the files that you have. So right click on it, click on copy, and you could go ahead and open up the external drive here. So for example, if you have a drive here, you could go ahead and click on it. So for example, I have the files and folders external drive here. You could go ahead and right click on it and you want to paste it so that you'll be able to basically uh, use it on other uh, computers or in other laptops. But in this case, that's about it. How to clear cache on Google Drive. In this case, how do you clear your cache on Google Drive? Well, clearing your cache in Google Drive is actually pretty easy. So the first thing that we want to do here is we want to access a Google Drive. In this case, go ahead and look for Google Drive here. Go ahead and open it up. Now, from Google Drive, we want to actually click on the tree bar icon at the top left of your screen. Now from here, you want to look for settings. So in this case, settings is going to be underneath backups and up uh, at the very top of help and feedback. Let's go ahead and click on it. Now in the settings section, you have your document cache at the very bottom. So that includes clear cache and cache size. So the cache size here it actually informs you how or how big the cache size is right now. And the clear cache option here allows you to clear your cache. So it actually removes all cache documents. Now, in this case, go ahead and click on clear cache here. And from here, just click on OK to confirm. And that will actually start clearing your cache. Now, in this case, uh, that's how you clear your cache on Google Drive. And that's about it. How to fix download code exceeded for this file Google Drive error. In this case, how do we actually fix this issue? Well, the first thing you need to do here is you need to access the URL of the file that you're trying to access. Now, just an example, we have this file here. Now, typically when you access a file, it's going to look like or similar to this one. So in this case, it's kind of different with the usual uh, URL that you're getting in Google Drive. So I'll be showing you how to actually change this and actually download that file. In this case, what we need to do is we need to identify the sections that we want to replace. In this case, we first need to look for the section here that says u slash zero slash zero uc question mark id is equal. In this case, we need to replace this by file slash d slash. In this case, is going to copy or type in the following in this section here, which is going to be uh, this one. In this case, let's go ahead and copy or uh, basically highlight this one and type in file slash d slash and uh, from here we are good now the next thing we want to do is we want to actually i've uh, changed the other section which is going to be at the very end so look for end export is equal to download and replace this with slash view in this case let's go and click on copy 
Now from here, let's go ahead and highlight this section here. Paste our uh, text here or type in your text. And from here, just press on enter and you should be able to start viewing that specific file. Now, once you viewed this file, instead of downloading the file again, what you need to do is you need to add a shortcut on your in your drive. In this case, go ahead and click on the add shortcut to drive at the top right here. And once you've clicked it, go ahead and choose the location. In this case, let's go and click on my drive here and click on add. Once you've done that, it's going to add the shortcut. So let's go and go to our drive. As you can see, we now have this specific uh, uh, file here. In this case, let's go ahead and create a new folder. Let's go, let's go ahead and click on the new, click on new folder here. And from here, you can name this whatever you want. So for example, I'm going to say it is going to be a test folder. Just click on create. Now, what we need to do is we need to uh, actually uh, move this one. So in this case, you could go ahead and uh, basically uh, move this in this section here. So typically what I like to do is you just need to press and hold on it just drag it into test folder. Once you've done that, as you can see, it is now in our folder. Now, instead of just going to that folder and right clicking on it and just clicking download, we need to go back. So in this case, view the actual folder itself. In this case, let's go and click on folders here. And from here, this is the folder that we created and added the shortcut of it. In this case, what we need to do is right click on it. And from here, click on download. And from then on, it's going to zip that file. And from here on, you should be able to download that file. On this case, that's about it. How to fix Google Drive full storage. In this case, how do we fix this uh, issue when in this case, our Google Drive storage is actually pretty full. Now, there are going to be certain ways that you could get around this one. So one of the ways for you to fix this problem is to basically delete some items that you don't want or you no longer need in Google Drive. So I know this is the obvious answer here, but in this case, go ahead and open up uh, Google Drive here. And usually you have the option here to view your file. So typically you just need to click on the tree dotted icon here and just choose the option uh, that actually says delete. So typically it's going to be at the uh, bottom side here. So in this case, let's just look, look for it. So again, it should be at the very bottom here, but if you if you don't see that, you just go ahead and go back, go to files at the bottom right. And from here, click on the tree dot icon again, and at the very bottom, you should be able to see the remove button. So again, this is the straight way or straight uh, process for you to actually remove or basically solve this problem, which in this case, Google Drive has a full storage. Now, for example, all the files that I have right now is actually pretty important to you and you want to uh, basically um, keep those files. You don't want to delete them, but you still want to fill, free up some space. Well, the direct answer or the alternative that you could do here is to basically just create a new account on Google. So the great thing about Google here is they actually allow you to store up to 15 gigabyte of storage. If I'm not mistaken, as you can see for the free version of Google here, you have 15 gigabyte of storage. So again, sometimes you might be nearing that 50, 15 gigabyte uh, threshold and uh, you want to basically uh, access or obviously expand your uh, your storage here. In this case, you could go and click on get more storage here, but again, this is going to be the free uh, paid version for uh, expand, uh, extending or expanding your storage here. So actually the plans they have right now here is actually pretty cheap. So currently right now in Australia, they actually give you an offer for two months. You could basically just pay 0 0.62 or 62 cents a month to get like 100 extra, 100 extra gigabyte of space. But so afterwards, after two months, you'll need to pay around $3 or 2.50 uh, cents or $2.50 for you to maintain that 100 gigabyte of storage. Now, in this case, if for example, you don't want to pay for the additional uh, storage here. Well, another way that you, you can expand your storage is by, by uh, creating a new account in Google. So typically, you just need to click on your profile at the top right here. And from here, just choose the option that says add another account. Now from here, let's go ahead and choose Google. And from here, it should redirect you to the next page. In this case, you have the option to create an account. Go ahead and click on create account and choose for my personal use. Now from here on, you just need to fill out all the necessary details that I require. So for example, I'm going to enter my name. You also need to enter your uh, birthday here as well as your email. In this case, once you've provided all the details, you should be able to create your account and you should now be able to start using it. 
Now, once you've created your account, what all you need to do is you just need to switch over to that other account. So at the top right, go and click on your profile. And from here, you should be able to see your other account here and just select on it. If you want to switch over, let's go ahead and click on that account and you should be able to go to, go to that account, which in this case, you should be able to uh, basically start adding files here if you want to. Now, if you want to uh, basically access those uh, files here, what you need to do is you can just basically select one of the folders here. Like for example, I have this uh, Gmail templates folder here. You can go ahead and click on the tree dotted icon here and just click on the share option here. And from here, you just need to enter the email or your email, which in this case, once you start sharing this, uh, you should your main account should be able to start accessing that file. So once you actually share access on that file, on your main account, it's not going to actually consume storage. So in this case, you're just basically sharing a link. So the actual location of that file is going to be the on the other account that you created. So this is a helpful tip or helpful thing that you could do here. But the only problem here is, for example, if you need more additional 15 gigabyte of data or uh, storage, you'll need to create another account for that. So it is kind of a hassle, but if you really want to get that free uh, storage, oh, well, in this case, that is the only way that we could do that. But yeah, so currently that is the only way for us to actually fix this issue in Google Drive. Maybe for paid ones or the direct solution or for the free uh, way that we actually just shown you. But that's about it. So if you found this video helpful, hit the like and subscribe button and watch our next video.